Hi, this is Geert Jan from the NetBeans team. In this screencast, we're going to take a look at the topic of dependent breakpoints in NetBeans IDE. Dependent breakpoints in the debugger are relevant when you want to enable a breakpoint based on whether another breakpoint was hit. In this way, you can create a path through your application code, hitting one breakpoint, going onto the other breakpoint, going onto another breakpoint, and at some point being able to branch off based on whether or not a particular breakpoint has been hit. To illustrate this, we're going to take a look at a very small example. We see here a method getCustomers. GetCustomers gets three customers from the scanner. Once we have the three customers, we're going to process them. If the name of the customer happens to be Max or Barney, then the out print line will print that Max or Barney is a manager. Otherwise, we'll be told that the customer is an employee. And finally, in all cases, we'll be told that the city that the customer comes from is the best city in the world. To see this um, result, we can see that here we've entered Peter in Prague, Jack in London, and Max in Amsterdam. As we can see, Peter is an employee, Jack is an employee, Max is a manager. Now we're going to set some breakpoints. Here is the first breakpoint, and here is the second breakpoint. Now that we have our breakpoints, we're going to debug the file again. Enter a name and a city, Jack and London, Peter and Prague, and Max and Amsterdam. Press enter. In the first case, Jack, the first breakpoint isn't hit, but the second breakpoint is hit. It will be hit in all cases. So we continue to the next breakpoint. Next person is Peter, he's an employee, the first breakpoint is not hit, and the second breakpoint is hit. In the third case, the first breakpoint is hit because we have max, and then the second breakpoint is hit. Now what we want to achieve now, and as you can see, we can close the file and reopen it, and our breakpoints are still there. What we want to achieve is that the second breakpoint should only be hit if the first breakpoint has been hit. So only if the customer is Max or Barney should the second breakpoint be hit. Definitely the first breakpoint will be hit in that case, but only if that breakpoint is hit should the second breakpoint be hit. To achieve this, we have the breakpoints window, and we also have these small red squares in the left sidebar. You can right click on these squares and go to breakpoint and properties, where well, you can see that you can enable and disable groups of breakpoints. And what we're going to do is we're going to therefore create a group to which the second breakpoint belongs. So we right click on the second breakpoint and we move it into a new group, which we'll call special. And this special group to which this second breakpoint belongs, we will say it is disabled by default, or at least we could say disable the whole group, or we could disable the individual breakpoints within a group. In this case, we'll just disable the whole group. We could just disable the individual one, since we only have one in this case. Here it is. And we will enable it if the first breakpoint is hit. So we go to the properties. So the properties you can go to either from the breakpoints window, we're going to properties or by right-clicking on the red square and going to Breakpoint and Properties. This one we will say that we will enable the group special. So here is the special group we created. We can also say enable all the breakpoints in a particular file. We can say enable all the breakpoints in a particular project. We can also say enable all of a particular type of breakpoint. So we can, we have a lot of different options of what exactly we want to enable or disable. But what we're going to do is we're going to enable the group that we've created called special. 
we click OK, and we can see that this breakpoint is disabled, this one is enabled, and we start the debug session. First of all, we will enter only customers that will not cause the breakpoint to be hit. So Peter in Prague, Frank uh, in Paris, and Jack in London. So in this case, there should not be any breakpoint that is hit. As you can see, no breakpoint was hit. So now we debug the file again. So we say Peter in Prague, and now Max in Amsterdam, and we say Barney in Milan. Press enter. In the first case, Peter, we can see that no breakpoint was hit. So Peter is an employee. Prague is the best city in the world. So that's Peter in Prague. No breakpoint was hit. So we went straight into the breakpoint. See here, the for Max. Max in Amsterdam. So what we should now expect, and you can see now that the breakpoint is enabled. So we continue, which means going from the one that we're currently in to the next one, which is enabled, especially because we have Max as the name of the customer. And now we continue out of this one to the next one. And the next one, what is that? Barney Milan, which is why the first breakpoint is hit and that enables the second breakpoint to be hit. As you can see, if you need to set dependent breakpoints using the NetBeans debugger, you can do so, and it's quite easy to set up and really powerful to use.